What's happened in the past has happened. We can't change that now. But you, here, now, you have a choice. We can reverse the years of moral injury that have been inflicted upon us. And we can start to make a change to build back the value in our profession. You can look back and think about what you've done and say, I stood up for what was right, what was reasonable, what was fair. I stood up for full pay restoration. Your BMA is fighting for you, but it's you members that have the power. And the action only works if we st stick together and strike together. That's how we'll win together. You are the BMA, you are the vehicle for change, and it's important we don't ever forget that. You've shown bravery and determination before, you're showing it again today. And if you keep doing it, we will win, because you know what's fair, you know what's reasonable. If we stick together, strike together, we will win together. Speaking next, we've got one of our North London GP trainees. He's the deputy chair of North Thames, but I call him Mr. ASMR, <laughs> and you'll find out why. <laughs> Malingo Ratwati, make some noise. Quickly, media bringing the ward closer to your doorsteps. Thanks, Siri. Hello. Good, good afternoon, doctors. My name is Malenga and I'm a GP registrar in North London and one of your BMA UK JDC reps. It's so wonderful to see so many of you out here today on this lovely sunny day in London. I'm honoured and privileged to be standing before some of the smartest, brightest and kindest people this country has to offer. Doctors, for many of you, this might be the third time that you've come into London in the space of three months to support this cause. I'm so respectful of your dedication and I want to talk to you about why this campaign is so important to us. I've been a doctor coming up to seven years now and in this time I've seen the government impose a contract on us against our will in 2016, year on year real terms pay cuts, demand for health services skyrocketing while staffing on rotors is getting worse and worse and a government that shows nothing but disdain for its healthcare workforce. For shame! Thinking back to the beginning of the pandemic, whilst the majority of the country were rightfully shielding and on furlough, doctors were going into work, risking their lives with bin bags for PPE, hearing stories about their colleagues dying. Did we shirk our duties? No, we didn't. But what were the government doing? They were having parties in Downing Street, breaking the very rules that they were setting. Whilst we were bringing the shame, exactly. They were breaking the rules that they were setting whilst we were worried about how our families might go on if they were to lose us. And how were we rewarded for these sacrifices? More real terms pay cuts. What a disgrace. But now, colleagues, things have changed. No longer will we stand for this degrading treatment. We have recognised that the onus is on us to take things into our own hands and demand to be treated with respect and dignity because it seems that this government will not do this unless we demand it of them. No longer will we stand by the wayside. You have the power to turn the tables. Colleagues, I want to level with you because I respect you. We've reached a stage in this journey where our resolve is being tested. Some of you might be asking yourselves, how long do we have to do this for? Is it going to be worth it in the end? I just want to get back to looking after my patients. It is precisely in these moments that battles are won and battles are lost.
when I look at this dispute, I don't see it as a short-term sprint with a finish line. I see it as a marathon that we are running to invest in our futures and the futures of those that come after us. A marathon that will bring about fundamental culture change in the way that the medical, medical profession is perceived and treated. No more sitting on bins, no more, sitting, no more working in closets under the stairs. If we want long-term change for our profession, we need to ask ourselves, what do we have to change about our own outlooks? We need a new outlook for the new challenging status quo. Doctors, I know that you're sacrificing. I know it isn't easy. But we must face short-term pain for long-term gain. You are already resilient and able to do this. The pressures that you sustain whilst working in overstretched and under-resourced workplaces have made you into diamonds, able to withstand anything. Restoring our pay is merely the first step in restoring our professional dignity. And if we don't do this now, we will continue to have more and, weight, more, and more taken away from us. We must stand resolute. We have to demand our worth. It won't be handed to us on a platter. Doctors, this campaign is hope. Hope there can be a better future for us. Hope that we can restore our profession's dignity and its sanctity. Hope that we can go into work knowing that we can deliver care that we can be proud of and coming back home at the end of the day feeling a sense of satisfaction with our careers and our lives. It is the least that we should be able to expect for the sacrifices that we have made, but our collective action can only work if we are all in it together. Stay strong, stay resolute, and together we will win. Power to you all and power to the doctors. Thank you. Now, our next speaker, arguably, we would not be where we are without her. Women in medicine often don't get the credit they deserve, and Ellen deserves all the credit that you're about to give her. So, now introducing Deputy Chair of the UK Senior Doctors Committee, Dr. Ellen Newman. I thought I'd give you the last view. As we always say, if you don't demand for something, you don't get what you want. The doctors are demanding for one thing, and one thing alone, they want a better pay, and they want a better opportunity. And that is exactly what is going on right here. As we always say, we all have a role to play. Play yours, and I'll play mine. This is Quakey Media. Bye for now.